Jet engines are an amazing innovation. They allow us to fly around the world at 40,000 feet at breakneck speed. A trip across the Atlantic that would have taken weeks only a few years ago can now be flown in under seven hours. But could a piece of such advanced technology be replicated by a kid in his basement? Most modern aircraft use either a turbofan or a turbojet engine. The problem with a turbofan is that each one has around 20,000 moving parts. So for this project, I had to build something called a pulse jet. The pulse jet was invented in 1906 by a Russian engineer named Karavodin. But pulse jets weren't used until 1939, during the Second World War. The Luftwaffe, aware of the development of a long-range rocket by the German army, began intensive development of a rival weapon. The flying bomb entered service ahead of the army's rocket and became known as the V-1. The V-1 was a devastating weapon that killed over 6,000 Londoners between the years 1944 and 1945. But it also marked the end of the pulse jet in aviation. It was replaced by the turbofan, which, as I mentioned before, has a lot more moving parts but is significantly more efficient. But for this project, it's perfect because it has zero moving parts and is relatively simple in design. Air and gas are sent through the intake into the combustion chamber. The gases are then sent out the exhaust in a rapid explosion. This happens a few hundred times each second and makes the distinctive pulse jet sound. This small scale model using a glass jar can kind of show you how the final product will work. Also, the glass jar allows you to see the combustion as it happens. This is a pretty cool model, but for the sake of this project, I want to scale it up. I started by making an ignition system that has a few basic components. A battery, a high voltage generator, and a momentary switch. The high voltage generator uses a transformer to step up the voltage from 6 to around 100,000 volts. And that's more than enough voltage to jump the gap of a spark plug so the spark plug can be used to ignite the fuel in the combustion chamber. And here's how it turned out. For the combustion chamber, I'm actually using a fire extinguisher. To start, I drilled a hole in the back for the spark plug. And I found an adapter on Amazon that will allow me to screw the spark plug directly into the combustion chamber. And since there aren't any nuts to fit this adapter, I'll have to weld it onto the combustion chamber later. The fire extinguisher was just a bit too long, so I had to cut about three inches off.
I sealed up the combustion chamber, I welded on the spark plug adapter. And I'm using a stick welder just because that's what I could get a hold of, but it's really not the kind of welding that I should be doing. As you can see, the welds are just a little bit rough. Even with the small 6013 electrodes that I'm using, I still had trouble getting consistent welds, especially on this really thin gauge steel. And before I welded the combustion chamber back together, I cleaned off the weld surfaces to give myself the best chance at good welds. It took me a little while to dial in my welder. As you can see, I burned through quite a few times. But once I got it figured out, I got some halfway decent welds. After that, I started on the exhaust, which is essentially a 1.5 inch in diameter piece of steel tubing that I had lying around. I then cut off the end of the combustion chamber to accommodate the exhaust. And then I welded it up to the combustion chamber. And though the welds were solid, there were still a few pinholes, making it so that it wouldn't hold perfect compression. Fix this by using some JB Weld. This will seal up all the pinholes without requiring a new welder. After that, I started on the intake. I cut a small notch in the pipe so that I could bend it. This will give it the correct angle to fit the combustion chamber. Then all I had to do to finish the body of the engine was to cut a hole for the intake and weld it all up. Then to finish it up, I added some JB Weld around the seams. final component that I needed for this engine was a fuel system, so I picked up this grill from a local Facebook group. All I needed was the fuel lines and fuel rails, so I removed all the hardware and took it out. Then I took off the fuel rail and added an adapter that would fit a high pressure valve. To the valve I connected yet another adapter that would go to a copper tube. And I had to use a special compression fitting so that the whole system would remain airtight. To finish up the fuel system, all I had to do was connect it to the engine. So I cut the fuel line off at about 5 feet, and then drilled some small holes in the line so that the fuel would be dispersed when it was in the chamber. Then I wrapped the fuel line around the exhaust. This will help warm the fuel up before it enters the combustion chamber. And that's about it, so all there is to do now is test it. The first test was cut a bit short what with all the smoke and fire, so we gave it another shot later in the evening.
I was thrilled to see the engine start, but as you may have been able to tell, it wouldn't run without help from the air compressor. To try to fix this, I increased the length of the exhaust. And when that didn't work, I tried to do another patch job on my shoddy welding. After that, I started it one last time. I am a little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to get the engine to self-sustain, but at the same time, I built a working jet engine in my basement. And since I use mostly found materials, the project only ended up costing about $150. And maybe I'll make a Mark II in the future, but for now that's about it. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see any of my other videos, I'll leave them at the end.